So enough of the what I'll show you. Why don't I just launch into something here? And we'll go from there. Yeah, and I know that you're going to cover this, but I, I, I want people to pay attention when you get to the part about um, where to put pieces of code and why you put those pieces of code there and and how the basically how the Lua file is structured for um, a composer uh, template because it's you know it's not a, it's not intuitive um, right away but once you understand the concept you're like oh okay now I get it uh, absolutely that's why I made the um... I made the framework, and I will go over that in detail because I, over the years working with Storyboard and Composer, I've come up with sort of like my own best recipe, and I feel like I always try to get people to use this because for me, it works. It keeps the code organized. I never forget where things are located. It just makes sense. And also, I like to help people when their code looks like mine. <laughs> so when they ask questions in the forum, if they're already sort of following my recipe, it just makes life easier. All right, so the first uh, thing I want to show you is sort of like the fun transitions um, example. And so I'm going to bring this up here, and we're not going to switch screens. I do apologize. Can you see that all right? Looks so good. what we've got here is the first application in the code that we're going to provide a link to, and it'll be on the GitHub, on a GitHub for people to download. And what this application does is it's got a couple of different scenes, and what we can do, can you see this little thing at the bottom? No, okay, good. I'm looking, sorry. What you see and what I see are a little bit different. Uh, Google's got a little uh, overlay on my screen telling me I can quit at any time. I hate it. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> no, we don't, we don't so, see that. Um, so, for example, why? <sighs> Knuckles. Okay, so, for example, I want to do a, um, a fade transition that takes one thousand milliseconds, one second. I can set the time to one thousand by clicking one thousand and click fade and it'll transition over to scene two and take one thousand. And then scene two I can set up with a different setting because it's sometimes nice to go back and forth between two. Now let's say from the right. And then I can go back from the left and so I can just play around with different time settings and different transitions to see what I'm going to get. So I never actually used the one I just clicked on there, but I mean some of these are kind of they're kind of interesting. Like that one was nice, but it was a little bit too slow for me. So I might say, well, let's make that half a second. Let's try it. Let's try it again. Let's put them both to half a second. That's still too slow. So let's make that 100 milliseconds. And that's too fast. Looks like I'm gonna. Uh, people can edit this code too. There's a there's a list at the top. In fact, why don't I just show you all right here? And you said that already, right? That that all this code's gonna be available to people. Absolutely, all this code is gonna be available. And if you want to go modify this particular example, you're going to want to look at the two scene definitions. So the folder itself will be. You're going to go to the Corona Geek um, archive that I have at the GitHub, and there's going to be one called Hangout 124. And under there is going to be Composer Scene Manager and Transition Library. Transition Library is another topic we were going to possibly talk about today, but we may not have time for them. So you want to go to the Composer Scene Manager and Example 1, which is Transition, so one we're talking about now. And the way I've got this organized is in the root directory of this application, is your main config and, um, config and build settings, your traditional, your typical files. And then everything else exists in a subdirectory. And for the way I write my applications typically, always I will put my scenes in a subdirectory called IFC, which is short for interfaces. So my interfaces, or my scenes, are scene 1 and scene 2, which is if I reload the application, scene 1, and scene two. And they have exactly the same content. I designed this so you can go back and forth between two scenes quickly with different settings. So if you want to change the timings, so example, let's go into scene one and let's add a 250 millisecond timing instead. Mm -hmm. If you go to the top of the 
file here, line 19. Change that, reload it, and now we've got a 250 a millisecond timing. And that's more about what I was looking for for the flip, about a quarter second, seems about right. So I gave some typical values, but absolutely people should go through here and change them to the ones they're looking to test. And that is about it. So that example. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, fast forward a bit and so, look at the framework itself. So really, the, the, just to re recap there, so basically the, the point of that um, of that transitions demo there is so that you can, without having to go through and, and code each one yourself, you can get a quick idea of of what's possible with the transitions in Composer. Yeah, um, when working with clients, a lot of times my clients will be, uh, this will be a new concept to them. And so I'll, I'll tell them, we're using a framework that allows me to put your game in one interface and your you know, whatever screen in another and that we're going to transition between these two by sliding left and right or fading, cross-fading between the two. And they're like, I don't, I don't really understand that. So then what I do is I make a toolkit, very much like what I just made for the show here, uh, and I give them some options. And I say, these are the options that we talked about. Why don't you click on these, change these values, and then experiment so you can see what I'm looking at here. Because especially when you're working with clients who are remote, Having them try it and say, ah, I like the one with a cross fade at 300 milliseconds. That's the one I feels the best to me. You know, let them do all the work. Save yourself hours of back and forth. And anyway, yeah. small piece of advice. So uh, you can you can grab this piece of code and use it directly for your own client work in a sense.